Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and today's system is from the user Red Car Racer in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending in their system but without further ado let's get into this so should already be here for us ready to rock and roll so let's go straight into it here it is C uh, what was the name it was CHXR I think that said should be interesting right Yes, yeah, CHXR73. Okay, so, looks like we're going straight in. Okay, so, there's the star itself. No description for the star. For, oh, let's have a full look at this thing first. Okay, so, it looks like we're straight to the point of the objects. There's a second star in the background over there. Okay, so, first of the planets. Let's go all the way over here. Okie dokie. A Venus-like world, but slightly cooler, although it is tidally coupled to its star which can cause temperatures to reach 630 degrees on the day side. So, pretty hot here. Let's have a look underneath. There you go. So, pretty Venus-esque in appearance. You can see it is using the actual Venus texture as well. Very nice. Looks quite good. That's quite a good iteration, actually. Nice. Looking good. Next up, we got the B planet. Oh, I like the atmosphere on you. Oh, yes. A hot desert world. Its atmosphere is dominated by carbon monoxide. It also has a clay-like colour due to all the rust being scattered across the surface. Similar to Mars. Okay. There you go. Underneath there as well. Nice atmosphere on that one. I do like those two tones. They are great. Uh, next up, we have the green third one over here. Similar to Earth, it has a similar atmosphere composition and even life. Although a key difference is its orbital inclination, which causes a chaotic change between seasons. Okie dokie. Look underneath there. Oh, wow. Looks like the sea level's a bit funky. There it is. So there you go. Next up, we've got the D planet over here. A semi habitable world due to its cold temperatures. Its atmosphere is similar to Earth's own, but it's thinner. Even though it's cooler, it still has water on the surface near the equators. Okay, so there you go. Underneath. It's pretty froze up, though. Alrighty. Cool. Uh, next up, we're heading to the E good a mars-sized planet similar to c and d it's also habitable and its temperature is the most earth-like at 11 degrees celsius on average so underneath as well there you go i always like the crater effect they always look good 35 degrees on this one average there you go so the description is a little different there uh next up we got the f first of the gas giants mini neptune with similar properties Although due to the abundance of argon and neon, it has various shades of orchid purple. The winds on this planet can reach up to 1,400 miles per hour. So that's, uh, that's pretty quick. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fast. All right, now we're heading to G. Okay. A titan-like world. It sees the composed of ammonia. It has slightly lavender haze in its atmosphere and also has life. There you go. Looking good. Uh, next up, we've got H over here. It's a Jovian planet. It has gases like chlorine, hydrogen, ammonia, and others in the upper atmosphere, which cause the multitude of colours. It's also twice as massive as Jupiter, but only 16% larger. Wind speeds can reach up to 2,900 miles an hour, so that is insanely fast. So there you go. Quite a nice uh, colour composition on you as well. And you can see it almost like, it looks like it wants to receive light from a second star. With the, I think that may just be the lighting background in here, though. Um, okay, next up, we have got the I. Similar to H, but slightly smaller. It is an unusually long rotational period of 80 hours. It's also the most inclined of the uh, gas giants, by the looks of it. Yep. Cool. All right, now we're heading to J, which is here. It's an ice giant. It has a similar atmosphere composition to Uranus and Neptune, but contains more methane in its upper atmosphere. It's a lot more bluish and greenish. Okay. Which causes more saturated blue. Yeah. Cool. Then we have K. Over, where, where's K? JK, there it is. Similar to Pluto and other Kuiper objects. It is covered in follins, which give it a wood like colour. It also has a thick oxygen rich atmosphere, which is extremely uncommon. So there you go. There's your Pluto uh, analogue of this system. Looks pretty good. Okay. Now we have L. Over here. 
A super Neptune, almost five times the size of Earth, and has many colours present in its atmosphere. Browns, blues, whites, etc. Its orbit is so inclined that either one of the poles is facing the sun for years at a time, similar to Uranus. Oh, yes. Very nice. Now we're heading to M. Got a green one over here. Another Neptune-like planet has an orbital period of 3.7 thousand years. So how far away are we from the start at this point? Oh, yeah. 353 AU, roughly. Oh, yeah. That's quite the gap. So there's M. And we have N. Even further inclined orbit. There it is, in pitch darkness. The outermost planet of the system. It's a mega Neptune near the mass of Jupiter, although it still contains compounds like methane in its upper atmosphere, which keep it a bluish hue. Okay. Right, now it looks like we're heading on to the second star. So taking a bit of a jump out from there. So where is that second system? Oh, there's multiple systems. Okay, so we're heading to 7-2 now, which is this way. Okay, alrighty. So I'm guessing these are smaller systems. That looks like a... Is that a red supergiant? Yeah, or... Yeah, it's a supergiant, I'd say. Okay. So no description on the star. So first of the planets here. That is Scorch. Look at the state of that. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. this is A. No, that's B. Okay, we're going to do B first. Formerly an Earth-like world, it is now tidally locked to 72 and temperatures can reach up to 17, 75 degrees Celsius on the day side. Its atmosphere, similar to 72A, is slowly being blown away and will completely escape in only a few thousand years. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's pretty, uh, pretty daunting seeing that every day. Uh, where, where is the first planet? And is it really? Where is the A? Oh, the, okay. Is it? Oh, it's on an inclined orbit. That's why. There it is. A hot super Jupiter, or an extremely low brown dwarf star, that is being vaporized by its host star. It also has an eccentric orbit, which causes the mass to be lost in cycles that take up to thirty-four years. It will be completely disintegrated in the next few billions of years. Very nice. Okay, so we've just done B, so now on to C, which is here. Another hot Jupiter. It's all it's slowly being pushed away um, and will eventually be ejected from the system. Okay, so solar winds pushing it out, I guess. Uh, we have D here, a Jovian planet with oddly similar colours to 71A. A very long time ago, it used to have many moons, but they were either ejected, collided with the planet, or the host star. One of these moons miraculously survived and became the next planet. Okay, that is E. Little safer zone out here. The safe zone around the red giant, I guess. Well, how far is this? 114 AU. Pretty safe jump. Former Hatsable moon. Or former moon now Hatsable for thick atmosphere, vegetation, and even life. It is the furthest planet and takes 357 years to make one single rotation around its star. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that is everyone around that star. So now we're heading to the 73 star, which is here. Okay, so first of the planets around 73. So here is A, a super hot Jupiter, seven times more massive and seven times larger. It has a slightly elliptical orbit and it's the closest planet to its star. Interesting color theme. Okay. Uh, next up, we got the B star, or the B planet, sorry. A Venus like world has a saturated yellow atmosphere due to the presence of sulfur. It has half the mass of Earth and a slightly similar density. It also has a rotational period of nearly 50 days. Okay, looking good. Uh, next up, we're going to see. Once a planet very similar to Earth, now a desolate wasteland. It has an extremely thick layer of clouds and its surface is mostly garbage, rock and metal from collapsed buildings. It la it, oh, it's a lake sorry, are filled with sewage and dead carcasses. Truly a hellish world compared to its former self. So this is a complete like, Armageddon, ruined, apocalyptic state of a world. So there it is. Doesn't look very nice, does it? That probably wants to be nice, vibrant blue and oceans and stuff. And now it's pretty dead looking, isn't it? And it's obviously hidden under that atmosphere. Yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty wild at 200 degrees as well. What a, what a wreck. Um, next one we got the D. Okay, there we go. Extremely similar properties to Earth. It's only 2% larger. It has a vast network of satellites which supply its citizens with a worldwide internet connection, similar to our own. Overall, its terrain is coloured an orangey grey due to the presence of sandstone on its surface. Good looking world, actually. Good looking world. Obviously, got the satellites going around as well. Now we're heading to the E. A cold planet mostly covered in tundra. Life has also developed a subglacially. This planet also has one moon which is Haspel. This planet 
is also responsible for many of the interplanetary telescopes in the system. Some of the Caris Outer Solar Telescope and Inner Solar or Inner System Telescope Observer 2. There you go. Has a moon as well. There it is. The only moon of E is a Titan like um, warm enough to sustain liquid water and has a relatively quick atmosphere. Or relatively thick atmosphere. This moon has also been colonised by E and many bases are scattered across its surface. It also has life of its own, although these are just single-celled organisms. Cool, okay. So there we go. Some space for Voyager 1's around here as well, interesting. Uh, next up we have this one, the G. A mega Neptune, 0.15% of the mass of Jupiter, but 72% as large. It's very under-dense for a gas or for an ice giant, sorry. There we go. Looking good. Next up, this is, uh, which one is H, isn't it? Yeah. Similar to Jupiter and Saturn, has five moons, one of which is Hatterwalt, which has a dark orange coloration due to the fact its atmosphere is denser than Jupiter's. So we've got some moons. So we've got uh, H, 73H moon. Okay, there you go. Let's go for all of those guys. I don't think they have descriptions, so they go. Oh, there goes. It's seventy-three, one, two. Oh, no, no, they're, they're the planets. Never mind. That's yeah. Okay. Cool. So there's the moons of that. So now we're heading to I, which is here. Okay. What's going on here? Right. A purple super Jupiter with four moons. Oddly enough, two of these moons orbit retrograde to the planet's rotation. In a few million years, they are speculated to collide with each other. Oh. -ho. So we have I and then three, which is one, two, three, which I'm guessing is this. The third moon from I, it has uh, also the most massive. It shares a lot of common Titan, thick atmosphere, clouds, and even a subsurface ocean. Cool. So that's the other moons as well. Now we're heading to J. I mean, it's quite similar to one we saw earlier. Um, a blue Jupiter, it's a hybrid between a gas giant and ice giant. It also has three moons. Similar to I, some of these, or it retrogrades the planet's rotation. So there they are there, the moons. Cool. Now we're heading to K over here. The furthest planet, it is a super Jupiter with five moons, each around the size of Earth. There you go, looking good. Nice. Uh, next up we have 74. Uh, a Venus-like planet. So so that's the second So that's the second star, so we're heading to A. There we go. A Venus-like planet of an atmosphere covered mostly of water vapour. Its surface is covered in graphite, similar to Mercury. Looking good. Okay. Then we're heading to the B one. Mars side uh, planet covered in a worldwide desert. Okay. See, we have a cold Earth, which is this one. Mostly covered in vegetation. It also into an, an ice age era of development and is beginning to freeze over. Alrighty. We got D over here. Near identical to C. It's only slightly warmer and slightly pinker vegetation. Alrighty. Uh, then we have E over here. The only planet system to hold advanced life. It has an ultra red atmosphere and similar vegetation to the other two. That is E, isn't it? Yeah. And then lastly, 75. So that's the other star over here. It's a brown dwarf. High mass brown dwarf and its system. Extremely chaotic and will collapse in a few thousand years. Oh man. Okay, so some pure carnage here. These planets have no description. So there you go. Here they all are there. Okay, so there we go. That does it for the CHXR 70 or 73 system, but with all these different ones. So there's the full lineup of everybody. Oh, yeah, that red giant was big, wasn't it? A super giant. There they all are. Okay, very bright here. <laughs> hey. Yeah, those were similar, those two. I thought they were similar, weren't they? Yeah. They're under different stars. Okay. Those two ice ones are quite similar as well. The blue ones. There's got some similar looking ice ones in there. There's the rest of the lineup. There's some good looking. I think the rocky planets are where this system shined the most, I have to say. I think they look good. So there you go. There is the full lineup. So yeah, there we are, guys. Again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system for sending this in. So they were Red Car Racer. 
So yeah, very, very nice indeed. Um, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well. And so subscribe helps on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. With that, we'll send it on everybody. Make sure you have a great day out there. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.